uh, touch on a couple more things. So uh, thanks for, for joining us and uh, we're gonna keep going here. So my, my question for you is what do you think is so quote unquote magical about Selmer vintage horns and the Mark VI in particular, and I mean the SBA too, but uh, maybe not to as great of a degree. What is so magical about those horns that has caused them to be, for the most part, the gold standard of you know professional yeah. saxophone players for the last fifty years? Sure, and that's you took the word right out of my mouth. I mean, it is the gold standard, and almost every modern saxophone, save very few, are based on that that instrument. Um, you know, I think that there was a couple things that just happened right when those horns were made. And number one, you know, if you look at anything made in the 50s and the 60s, there was built to be a professional whatever, a car, a, you know, a lamp, anything, man. I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record, but stuff was just made differently back then. And that's just the base level. I think the more important thing to think about is how our consumer culture has, you know, transformed since then. Mm -hmm. And when that stuff was produced, I mean, there was such an impetus. Um, that's my buzzer. I'm going to ignore that. There was such an impetus on repairability and sustainability and stuff being durable that we've kind of, again, as a consumer culture, we've lost that as something that we're, you know, that, that yeah. informs our decision to make purchases, right? Yes. So, um, you know, when these horns were being made, that was still very much a thing. Like you didn't, there weren't a lot of people, I don't, I don't think, like me out there. You sent your horn back to the factory to have it worked on. And therefore, they were trying to make it last as long as possible simply for financial reasons. I mean, they were choosing the best materials, the best pads, because they were, I mean, they were giving out like 15, I think it was like, I think King gave out like a 50 year warranty or something like that. I mean, they weren't messing around. They, they really wanted this stuff to last for their own benefit. And if you look at advertising from back then, that was a, that was a big deal. It was like how long it was going to last and that we're going to take care of you, send it back. We'll make it look brand new for you, you know? So that was one thing. The other thing being that, you know, in terms of the mechanics of the horn, I think things just kind of all aligned during that period to mm -hmm. make an instrument that was both, you know, the most ergonomically advanced that it ever had been. Like with the super balanced action, we moved from, you know, the straight tone hole design to the first horn that had a radial key work. That's the, the SBA was the first horn to have that. And the, the Mark VI, in a way, you know, some people would disagree with me, but they kind of improved upon that, I think, to make it even more, you know, comfortable under the hands. And, um, you know, I think that combined with just the manufacturing that was going on at that point, and again, you know, the, the pride that, you know, these people took in making these instruments, it just kind of came to a head. And they yeah. came up with more or less the perfect saxophone, you know, in, in terms of intonation, ergonomics, build quality, um, ease of play, evenness of play. I mean, I, I don't know. Does that, does that make any sense? Oh, absolutely. I think that... Uh... That for the most part covers uh, uh, the whole the whole Selmer thing. I mean, it, it's just such a such a behemoth. Of